Hello, and welcome to Memory and Engagement Opportunity for Wellness, Week 3. I am your host, Michelle Hobb, the leader of the Meadowlark Special Programs. The purpose of this opportunity is to work on engaging and attending, so focusing on tasks, moving and talking together, remembering and recalling, and hopefully give you an opportunity to laugh. So just a quick review of last week's homework. Last week we were talking about descriptions and how we can use descriptions to help us when we can't come up with the words that we're looking for. So some of your words that you had to describe were soap, um, balcony, bus, restaurant, and phone. Um, so I hope you were able to do that. If not, um, jot down those words, um, missing the comma there after bus. Um, but write down those words and you can practice coming up with descriptions of those um, based off of the function or the purpose, um, what you do with it, what the parts are, um, where we find them, and how we use them. So those are the types of ways that we were working on describing last week. Um, also, we did some breathing exercises um, just to help us really work on gaining focus and attention. Sometimes our world gets a little chaotic and now's a prime example of that. Um, even though you may be feeling like you're very calm, um, our mind can tend to wander. So if we can refocus um, by coming back and catching our breath, really centering ourselves with our breath, um, then that can help us to then focus and, and attend to things better. So I'm just going to give one demonstration of this. Um, so we want to think about sitting up nice and tall, um, sitting really on our hip bones, which allows us then to keep our shoulders back and then really expand our diaphragm, which is right underneath our rib cage. When we breathe in for three seconds and then exhale, for three seconds. So you just practice that breathing in and out, in through the nose, expanding that diaphragm, out through the mouth, and really contracting that belly, thinking about bringing the diaphragm as small as you possibly can. We're not going to work on breathing today, um, but I do want you to keep that in mind and keep working on your, your breathing and that concentrated effort of focusing on your breathing. Also last week, we talked about moving multiple times a day. So we want to think about walking, marching in place, even cleaning is an, a movement. It's an, a daily activity um, that you can do to keep your muscles moving, keep your heart rate up a little bit, and to work on some different breathing techniques. And of course, staying connected. Um, this time of more, more isolation um, is really important to reach out. Uh, one of the things that is a leading cause or risk for, I should say actually a leading risk for dementia and memory problems is a lack of social involvement. So obviously our times are putting us in that risk, but we don't have to let it take advantage or take control of us. So we need to make a concerted effort to get in to the people that we know. Um, calling, writing letters, FaceTiming, Zooming, whatever it is, um, but find that way. Make the time in your daily schedule to make a connection. So be socially involved even in this time of physical isolation. So working on, we also know What's good for the heart is good for the brain. You're gonna hear me say that every week probably, but we know, science tells us over and over again that the more that we exercise, the better our brain can work as well as our heart and lungs. What we want to do from a memory perspective though is start working on adding in some cognitive tasks to our exercise. So I want to take this time to get us thinking about moving our body and moving our brain, if you will, at the same time. So first thing we're going to do is just start off with marching. So we're just going to be marching in place. Get those arms going, get those legs going. 
okay? And I want you to think about smiling here too because it really helps us with our inner thoughts if we're smiling. It's hard to feel down or frustrated when you make yourself smile. So that's our first part, marching, moving feet and arms. So keep marching. I'm going to go on down to the next one. So now we start adding in some of our cognitive component. So, oops, sorry. Okay, let me grab my paper here and make sure that I remember what target words I wanted us to work on today. So we're going to work on this here where we're just going to do marching and then we're going to add in jumping jack arms. Okay, so let's do this for just a second. Get used to those legs going up and down. Get used to those arms like you're doing jumping jacks, okay? Now, stop those arms, just go back to your normal march. Now, every time I say a vowel, we're going to do jumping jack arms. So it'll be A, E, I, O, and U. Okay, now back to just your marching. All right, so any vowel, A, E, I, O, U. And if you can repeat it after me, that even brings in more of a cognitive component, okay? Now the next thing we're going to do is work on some, keep that marching going, don't stop. And now we're going to work on hands to knees when we have a consonant. So let's just practice that movement. This one's a little bit harder, a little bit trickier here, especially as I'm on my balance ball. I probably should have grabbed a regular chair for this one. All right, so we got that now. Let's go back to our marching. Now I'm gonna say consonants. You repeat it after me. And at the same time, we're gonna make our hands go to our knees and raise them up. All right, here we go. B. C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X. Y is one of those tricky ones. We could do it, we could not. And Z. Great, great job. All right, so let's go back to that marching. All right, now our next one that we're doing, we're going to go ahead and move right on in to the whole thing. So we're going to spell some words. You'll see why we're doing words here in a little bit. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Our first word is banana. So we're still marching. I was off there. My hands and arms were going the same instead of opposite arms and legs. All right, so we're marching. Now we're going to spell banana. Again, let's do it together. Use your voice. And when we come to a B, or sorry, when we come to a vowel, we'll do jumping jack. When we come to a consonant, we do hands to knees. Here we go. Back to our march. Banana. B. A. N. A. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so let's spell banana. Here we go. B A N A N A. <laughs> so you can see this is a little bit tricky. Number one, I keep hitting the wall a little bit. And number two, it just takes a little bit more effort here. So here we go. Our next word is going to be telephone. Okay, here we go. T E L E P H O N 
E. Good job. Very good. All right. Now I'm going to give you just a second here. And our next word is going to be splash. Here we go. Last one. S P L A S H. All right. So hopefully that got you thinking a little bit. Um, I want you to try this at home more. So. You can write this down, um, take a little picture and try it, or better yet, you can watch this same show later um, and do it again. But try your own words and really focus on keeping that voice and the, the movements and that march the entire time for your words that you spell. Today we're going to be working on, oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay. All right, so I wanna start off the rest of our session today with talking about some memory strategies. When we are wanting to remember things, there are a few things or even have conversations with people that we need to check about our environment. Number one is the light. Is our lighting good? Are there shadows interfering with the people that you're trying to communicate with to where you might not be able to see their expressions um, or hear all of their words clearly that you can't read their lips to help you gather what it is they're saying? Make sure that the sound is good. Is there background noise? Are you outside where it's really windy or is there a train going by? And then of course, distractions. Um, maybe the phone is a distraction. Maybe you want to keep looking at that or you're getting text messages. Maybe also the environment itself is distracting. Um, maybe having too many pictures on the wall or um, clocks that are tinging every 15 minutes. Those are types of distractions that can interfere with our ability to attend to a message. The other thing you want to make sure of is only communicate when you have your glasses and your hearing aids and they're both in and on. Um, so if we have systems, internal systems like sight and sound that are challenged but we have these modifications of glasses and hearing aids, we really need to make sure that we're wearing and using them anytime we want to communicate or learn and remember. Also, our attention. So when we think about attending to something, we need to think about all of our different senses that can help us tune in and remember. So the sight, what we're seeing, what we're hearing, what we're touching or feeling, um, what we might smell or taste, those are all of our general senses that help us to bring things into our bodies, um, into our minds, so that we can remember. The other important thing I want you to note here is our emotion. Our brain is better able to remember things when there's an emotional component involved. So whether that's sadness or joy or fear or sorrow, those things are going to be remembered better than something that we don't have an emotional connection to. So try to place, when there's something you really want to recall, try to figure out some emotional underline that will help you to kind of put that sticky note in place for that memory. Monday, April 13th, National Scrabble Day. So during this activity, we're going to be talking today about some Scrabble things. Um, I want you to pay attention to details. So again, check your environment really quick. Is there anything you need to adjust to allow you to have optimal attention for this session? And then I want you to really key into some things because we are going to try to recall information at the end of the session. So a walk down memory lane. 
So Scrabble was first created in 1933 by Alfred Mosier Butts. He was an architect and he spent a lot of time researching after the Great Depression um, different types of games and why certain games were successful. So what he found was that the, the card games and the number games all had some scoring ability, but the word games didn't really have a way to score and those then weren't quite as popular as the others. So what he did was devised this word tile game and then he started analyzing the New York Times, the front page of the New York Times. He then created an equation that helped him come up with a ranking, if you will, for each of the letters um, in the alphabet. That's where we come up with the scores or the, the numbered point system on each of the tiles based off of the New York Times front page. I thought that was really interesting. Um, I myself have not ever been a really great Scrabble player. Um, I think I'm just too too rigid. Um, I don't know. Too, I like structure and I have a hard time kind of flipping things around and seeing things in different angles sometimes. Um, but I've always loved to try. Um, kind of the same thing with crossword puzzles. Not always the best. It's, it's tricky because you kind of have to have that, um, that word bank in your, in your head um, and that comes with some practice, a lot of practice. Um, but I do love those and I've always loved word searches. Um, and then of course, Payday, um, Monopoly, those kinds of things, Chinese checkers, all of those games have always been favorites of mine. And with our time of physical distancing, our family has had more opportunities to do that as well. So I'm going to give you just a second to take and jot down or talk with a friend about a memory that you have with a board game. So maybe what was your favorite board game? What is your favorite board game? Um, thinking back as we walk down memory lane, maybe to a time when you created your own little board game. Um, so take a second and jot down a memory about a board game. All right, so you've got that kind of in your head now, so you can finish that memory a little bit later. So, perseverance. Um, one of our first um, messengers that I provided a brain game for was this one right here, where I gave you the word perseverance and asked you to try to come up with as many words using these letters as you could. Um, and then to write a story about what this word perseverance means to you in this time of the coronavirus. So what this activity is, is an anagram. And so an example of this might be where you have the word attention and then you mix the words around and come up with the word intonate, okay? So when we would look back at the word perseverance, the Scrabble Dictionary says that there are 474 words that can be created from the word perseverance. I was blown away by that. I did not think it would be that many. Um, but those words, those 474 words are either two-letter two words or ranging all the way up to 10-letter words. Um, so that's a lot of words to come out of that. That again is where I think that game of Scrabble is such a um, a specific vocabulary because so many of those words were two and three letter words that we don't use in our common language very often. Okay, so here is where I want you to think about your focus and your attention. And we're going to look at some words that you're going to see later. These words here, these five words, are words that can be created as an anagram from the word perseverance. So, reverences, presence, escape, peace, and spa. 
So first thing I want you to do is just take a second to look at those five words and see if you can find any sort of a similarity, something that is makes those words all kind of be a little bit more connected. So for me, I tried to create these words um, to think more about kind of like escape, I, get, I guess, is kind of the, the concept I was going for. Um, you know, reverent, you know, being, being reverent in a place, um, having your, your presence be right where you are. You're escaping to that space of peace. And when you're in that peace, you might even go for a spa. Um, so reverences presence, escape, peace, and spa. Focusing that attention on those words, we'll come back to those later. So some specific memory strategies. One of those memory strategies you just heard me do, which is rehearsal or repetition. We repeat it over and over, and I'm sure a lot of you, if not all of you, have used this strategy before. I want to just really highlight and bring to your attention what you can do when you need to remember. So rehearsal, repetition. Another strategy we're focusing on today is association or grouping. So again, as we did on that previous slide, we came up with some sort of a commonality, an association or a grouping of peace and escape, um, kind of a, a, a nice reverent mind, mind place. Um, so those are two of the strategies we're really focusing on today. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So rehearsal, here we go, practicing again. Reverences, go ahead and say it after me. Reverences. Presence, then we'll go back, reverences, Presence, escape, reverences, presence, escape, peace, reverences, presence, escape, peace, and spa, reverences, presence, escape, peace, spa. Okay, so we had a really great opportunity. We're going to repeat those, to rehearse those. Now let's take them away and let's take just a second to see what we can remember. Okay, let's go ahead and look at those. So reverences, presence, escape, what's next? Peace and spa, right. So another thing that I kind of wanted to work on here a little bit is thinking about the what you see. So when you look at this, the words start larger and get smaller. Um, or you can look at it the opposite direction, getting from small to larger words. Um, so finding, again, something visual that we're working on with our auditory rehearsal to help us remember. So how'd you do? Were you able to remember at least a couple of those? All right, great. So our next strategy, grouping. So as we said, grouping is where we have things that are similar, that are have some sort of an association to help us remember, a clumping, if you will. Okay, so grouping. These words have nothing to do with our other themes. So this one's kind of just a mental break from those words that you've been practicing over and over. A distraction, in other words. All right, so here we go. So our words are bear, sparrow, strawberry, and Danish. Grapes, dog, goat, and banana, okay? So when we look at these words, we have two distinct groups. What groups would you separate these into? 
Right, so we're going to separate them into animals and foods, okay? So let's see, let's go back, look at that one more time. Bear, sparrow, strawberry, Danish. Grapes, dog, goat, banana. Okay, so now let's go here. So as we go, let's take a second, try to recall some of those animals and recall some of those foods. Okay, so another thing I did with this exercise is I tried to match up a letter for letter. So for example, we have bear and banana in our picture here, okay? And then, oops, sorry about that. And then we have D for dog in Danish, so, there, so on and so forth. Um, so this one is a little bit different. You're, ca you're grouping or categorizing as you're trying to remember. Okay, so animals were our bear, dog, goat, and sparrow, and our foods were banana, danish, grapes, and strawberries. Okay, so take a second. Now we're going to add in also that rehearsal. So repeat those animals, repeat those foods, group those, associate those. Okay, now I want you to just take another little bit and we're gonna do it one more time, thinking about your grouping in uh, animals and foods. All right, and here are our responses again. So for part of your homework, what I'd like you to do is, again, grab that paper and pen and jot down animals and foods. And then I want you just later to come back and you're going to add some more animals and foods to each of those categories and then try memorizing them as you add on to them. So maybe you just add two more to the animals, right? And then you look at those you, you rehearse those like we did on our others and like we just did on this. You repeat them, rehearse them, then you put them away, wait about 10 seconds, then try to jot them down or say them, remembering them. If you need to take a peek, not a problem. That's how we get stronger, building up those brain muscles, um, but practice and rehearsing those. Do the same thing then for your foods. See how many you can get up to to memorizing. Um, that's a really great goal to work on throughout the week. Okay, so your homework for this week is that I want you to work on finding the time to attend to a task and think. So again, going back to this, this exercise here is what I want you to be really thinking about. Adding to animals, adding to foods, then rehearsing and memorizing. You can also do this um, with different ones. So maybe you go through the newspaper and you find an article and you find all the words that begin with the letter M. Write those words down. Then try to see if any of those also have, you can work on rehearsal that way, but then you can also see if there are any similarities, any groupings or associations that you can chunk out and help you work on memorizing. Okay, so that's your first homework assignment. Your next one is, since we did not do breathing exercises today, I want you to do your breathing exercises. So again, breathing in for three seconds and out for three seconds. So and you can increase that exhale as long as you feel like you're getting that good controlled support. The other thing I want you to do is continue moving multiple times every day. Marching in place like we did. Remember how we did jumping jacks for 
the vowels and we did hand raises for the consonants. Um, take some of the words that you're creating or working with in your memory strategy of, of rehearsing and grouping and practice that. You know, do your marching in place and when you spell the words out, B, A, N, A, N, A. Okay, so vowels, consonants. Practice those cognitive with motor tasks. And then, of course, as you're going to hear me say every week probably, call or write a letter to a friend or family member. Social isolation is not good for our brain or our spirit. Make sure that you are staying socially connected in this time of physical distancing. All right, as always, I want to leave you with some things to laugh about. Why? Because laughing is good for you. It's good for the heart, the lungs, the soul, and the spirit. So, keeping in line with the Scrabble, National Scrabble Day, a friend of mine just lost a game of Scrabble. Didn't look good from the word go. I think that's pretty funny. You can roll your eyes at me too. It's okay. Sus suspect, <laughs> suspect there, sorry, excuse me. Suspect there will never be an edible version of Scrabble. But if there is, I'll eat my words. As a speech therapist, that's pretty funny. And lastly, Scrabble is all fun and games until someone loses an eye. Same thing, pretty clever. All right, so I know I have a cheesy sense of humor, but hopefully it made you laugh. Again, laughing is good for you, and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Wash your hands and be well. See you next week.